So we were discussing on stack last week, and we were start, uh, we were about to start the queue this week, and we did discuss some last week as well in the queue. Uh, basically, is a bit of opposite of a stack queue. Uh, opposite is a queue. It's both a uh, linear list like. Just difference is which one to take out the first, right? Uh, so which ones take out the first? The easy term is last in, first out. First in, first out is the first one, first out is for the queue. So it basically line up and where to add in, where to add out. The, we're going to call that as uh, front and rear in queue. Uh, in case of stack, it was in top and bottom, right? So where do we add in the elements in the list for the queue? Is it front or rear? Rear, though. Because one in gets the elements who stay the longest in the list will be take out the first. So first in, first out. So you will add an elements at the end. So obviously the rear pointer will be keep moving around as well as the pointer for the front because elements will be pop off. Pop might not be confusing for the stack, exp uh, uh, stack expressions. Um, what was the term that described this adding an elements and removing an elements from a queue? For in, in terms of stack, it was pop and, uh, and push. What was it in here? In Q and DQ, of course, our, some of our textbook also referring to a pop, but I recommend to use the term for NQ and DQ. Uh, NQ is basically the same operation for add in the list, linear list operations that we have looked at so far, which means obviously it will be just the same that um, uh, we can rely on some of the functionalities that is given by the linear list before we can modify it and still use it in the queue uh, operations. That's the beauty of inheritance and, and apps ADTs, list of ADTs, how to implement the, each functions in it, right? We discussed all that last week. So, this is QADT. Uh, obviously, instances are order list of elements. I mean, stack is still order list of elements. One end is front, the other end is rear, right? We all know this. Set of operations, empty, just telling us whether Q is empty, which means we do, we, whether we have any elements in it or not. Uh, if, it, uh, if it's empty, true, otherwise, false. We, it's similar operations we have seen it before. Size, number of elements in the queue, front, uh, return, the front element of the queue, back, return the back, uh, rear element on the queue, pop, remove from the queue, but I recommend to use the term for DQ, take an element out of the queue from the rear. Push, add an element to the queue, and queue might be a right term to use in this queue uh, context. Okay. 다음 과목에 공부들 많이 안 했구나. 다음 과목 공부하는 사람들이 많네. About 50% of you studying for the next exams. That's <laughs> okay. I understand this week. Um, so obviously, just like the other uh, linear, uh, variations of a linear list uh, in the previous chapters, uh, it still it has uh, two ways of uh, representing a queue. Obviously, one is array based, the other one is a linked list, or in the textbook we call it as a chain, right? So we're gonna take a, each one by one, and what was the issue of looking at these two t two different type of representations? Muji, what was the bottom part of looking at all this? It's mostly about time complexity. Which one is more efficient or not? Which, uh, right? Or sometimes they do discuss for the space complexity for other things, other ADTs, but in Q ways, 
probably more focuses on the time complexity. So let's take a look at one from a array-based representation. Right, is this just same? Um, it's, a, it's not so much different from a ADT uh, explanations and the previous two, two slide ago. This is uh, more of a well, C++ way of writing the define the ADTs for a queue. So you can take a look at a program 9.1. It's not so much different from this. I'm just they have just returning value of zero. That's it. It's not so much different. Okay, so array-based representation of the queue. What might be the easiest way of making array into a queue? Well, array into the queue, just like the one way, normal ways, typical way of drawing it. Uh, array, uh, maybe this, we make this as a front or rear, or you can do an opposite and Without even looking at this slide, if I have A, B, C, D, E, I'm gonna call this as a front, rear. Okay, I, I ask this Q to be uh, uh, DQ1. So wh what am I doing? Rear should be there. So which means I'm taking this one out, A out. Okay, at this moment I have a two choice. What well, might be the first choice? After I remove an A, what can I do? I need to do something, so I need to find out which one will be the next one. Okay, two, two ways. One well, might be the first way. Well, more so. You come in. What do you have to do? I know you answered that. Good one, two one, two. Well, you can shift everything by one here. B, C, D, E. At the same time, I have to point the rear, so change. Okay. Or you can start moving this thing around without changing this elements in it. I mean, uh, so that's the basic idea for all this. But when we look at the first one, is it a good idea to shift things around within the queue, within the list, I mean? It's also extra operations. Most likely, it would take the order n, right? Because you have to move everything by location one by one. So at this moment, you can see a, what might be the time-consuming task if we take this approach or not. So next few slides, just explaining that and different scenarios of those stuff and hopefully they can give you a, uh, a solution to not to have a longer time complexity for maintaining this list uh, so you can work as a queue. So have that in mind and let's try. Front and rear looking like that, front always to be zero, right? front, zero, rear, there. Rear, notice that rear is not the end of a list Okay, uh, rear is the last elements. It's pointing <coughs> to a last element in the list. Okay, so do not do not mix up with that. So, uh, using simple formula equations, location i is i minus one, obviously, right? I like to find the first element one minus one zero. That's where my first element is in my array, right? Zero location. This simple uh, equation that we saw many times. The first element is in the queue is zero. The second element is one, and so on, so on. Front, always equal to zero. Rear, the back side, location of the last elements. The queue size is rear plus one. Last element in the list, for example, it's a three. It start from zero, zero, one, two, three, so the size of the queue is, should be four. It will be one, two, three. The location of this is two. So if I wanted to find out how many, how many elements in the list, I need to add one, three. 
very simple stuff, just because we start from zero in the array explanation. How much does it time to need for a pop or DQ? I like to take out A from a list. In this case, if you look at it this way, A, B, C, A, B, C was in there, and then they take out A, B, C, move there, and then after that, they add the new element D. <coughs> Typical operations like adding D. So how much time does it need to, does it need for the pop? When, okay, so this is a brief idea. Uh, when the front is the left end of the list, rear is right end. So I'm gonna decide that that side will be the front, this side will be the uh, rear. Uh, when the front end is list, right end is end. The queue is empty, array list empty. Because it's a still array based linear list that we looked at before. If you look at the ADTs for array based linear list, they still have the same function called empty. Empty. Just checking out whether this thing is empty. So I don't need to implement this for just for the queue. I can just simply use this function to ask whether my queue is empty or not. Likewise, the front function for the queue should be uh, uh, returning the first element in the queue. You know? Uh, but we know the first element always be always uh, in the location of zero in the array. So I can just simply use the previous function in the uh, array linear list class. They have a get function. This is a location of the elements. Get first element. I, I, that's how I implement this queue using array linear list. Those of you who just came in, I mentioned briefly about the midterm coverage. We'll be covering up to matrix section, which is chapter seven. Chapter seven, don't get confused. Continue on the queue. Ah, Wednesday, I will do a brief review on the midterm stuff, just to those of you who just came in. Uh, but it's not gonna be that long. I mean, I looked around, it's not, not much to review. How much do you do? Um, <laughs> 왜? <웃음> 별로 볼거 없던데 내가 뭘 얘기해 줄 쪽집게를 한번 훑어봤는데 뭐 별로 찝어줄 게 없던데. <웃음> 저, 슬라이드가 뭐야? 4.2까지니까 슬라이드 한 다섯 개, 숙제 두 개, 땡이지 뭐, 뭐 뻔하지 뭐. 어? 아 책. <웃음> Always, I'm asking you to take a look at your slide first. Kijo? This is, oh, or we can do. If you're really running out of time, take a look at your assignment first, review the assignment, and then you start looking at the slide, memorize things that you need, you think it's necessary, and then you can go to textbook, okay? Don't go textbook slide assignment. That way is wrong, okay? And plus you don't have time to all do that. Um, I forgot. Assignment solution one and two is up on the Hanyang Inn. I'm sure many of you already downloaded it. Uh, I will uh, take it out today. So make sure you download it today. Okay, I'm not gonna send it to you again. Hanyang Inn에 올려놨는데 한, 올라간 지한 이제 6일 됐거든요. 오늘 내릴 거예요. 그러니까 수업 끝나자마자 내릴 거야. 아니다, 한 12시 정도에 내릴 거예요. 그러니까 알아서 하세요. Uh, so back to this Q dot back array linear list get lengths. Always the last element in the Q is the one in the rear. So find out how many elements in my list that will be uh, that can get me a location of the last elements that is representing the length, the size of the uh, linear list, right? So. He's all taking just constant operations, just one, right? Because I'm just looking at the location for zero, looking at the last location. That doesn't require any, any of the search, just constant operations there, right there. This one as well, I mean, function itself. Uh, Q dot push, array linear list insert length and X. 
um, push or enqueue the elements at the end. So I find out the uh, last position of A, which is the size of my current array. I just add an element in that location. But one thing to be careful of, make sure I don't, I, I don't exceed the total size of the array. Right? Array size is just five. I like to add a six element. That's not possible, right? So within that code, they probably have that checking function inside. If the array size is bigger than the total length, allowed length, then uh, they probably give you an exception or error message that you cannot do these operations. They probably have that in the inside the insert function, right? That you have written before when you're using this array linear list class. So I don't need to do it again for my this my queue. Okay. So even if I ask you similar questions for the final exams, I'm asking you to implement a queue ADTs. Number of lines of code that you have to write is very minimal, maybe max two. I mean, if I give you a condition that you can use a array linear list class, then there is not much to write. So you can write in your own functions, but why, why not use a simpler ones that you have, you can use, you're allowed to use. Okay, that's the main idea for uh, covering all this. Okay, pop, this is problem once. Array linear list erase at position zero. As soon as you re erase, you need to move stuff, like the shifting stuff. That's why it says order of a length, order n to be more, uh, to, to simplify. So always if you see a order n, n square, the next job is, uh, if, is there any possible ways to remove that operation cost into a constant or maybe close to a constant? If it's not possible, maybe even slower, faster way of doing it. So to perform in every operation in constant times, we need to customize the array representations. We need to change something. We, we need not changing something. We need to change our view on looking at this array itself. Not just simply shifting stuff. Shifting order n, I don't want that. And hopefully there is a, the other way around to do this. But not changing this changing our view on looking at this. First in, first out. 그래서 시험 후기 맞죠? 시험을 스택으로 표하면 작살 나는 거죠, 그죠? Array based representation of the queue, front, rear, same. But you notice that from a previous slide, it says A, B, C is the initial one, but when they remove an A, you notice that front is now moved to here. I think before slide, the front was still here, B and C moved up here. So that, you see a change. At the, the uh, uh, and in this situation, you're also adding an element D, rear move back. So this is modify formula equation, location I, location one plus I minus one. Easily, you just shift things around. The front shift, front move one back. One, not back, this way, right, okay. No need to shift the queue in one position left. Each time the element is deleted from the queue, no need to shift, shift by one. Shift operation is costly operations. So instead, each deletion costs the front move right by one. Simpler way, I mean, we're moving around the pointer itself, we're just adding, an, adding one or two. It's a simple addition addition operation, so it's not costly operation to follow. So we're gonna move uh, front to the right by one every time we encounter a DQ, removing uh, elements. 
front is location one, rear is location and last element and empty queue has rear is smaller than front. 이렇게 서로 만나 갖고 이렇게 교차되는 거죠. If, if so, then it means the queue is empty. Front and rear pointer is maybe interacting or even front is up here. Then it means that you don't have any element in the list. Okay, simple ideas. But what do we do when rear is equal to max size, max size minus one and front is greater than zero? Basically, it says what, what happened if we hit the end of a array. You're gonna keep move your stuff on the right side. At some point, you will be reaching at the rightmost end. So, what do you do? What do you do then? Seems you cannot add any more elements. Seems that you don't have anything to pop it from. It's basically, that's asking what if situations like that. What do you have to do? That's the question here. So they give you a solution right away. Good, good. To continue adding to your queue, we shift all elements to the left end of the queue, but shifting increased worst case and time complexity to order uh, theta here, but order constants to the order n. We need a better method. We could at the, when we hit the end, we could shift everything, whatever left into the left side, again, so starting from it. But it says it's also another shifting process involved, so it's not going to be a constant operation. Once in a while, we need to do a order n operation. It says it's not a good approach. It's not a good, they say if not a good approach, it means there are better approaches. That's why they say it's not a good approach. If you don't know the better solution, you can just do it this way. For us, I don't care. Uh, why, why, why are you using a uh, complex method if there's a simpler way of doing it? What might be the possible solution for this? We covered a little bit on this part when we're discussing a linked list chains. I know we're talking about arrays, but we did briefly discuss with the ideas. I mean, when we, when we discussed Double link, single link list, double link list, bi directional double link list. And then the last one, I think it was about circular link list. Circular link list. If you think about it, if we treat this as an array, as a circle, which means the front, uh, the beginning of the array, end of the array, hitting, meeting each other, then we can keep going around the array continuously. Just be careful of when to stop and same condition, conditions to follow, conditions to check every single time. But if we have a circular way of looking at this, we don't need to uh, shift things in this way. We just simply need to shift the pointers all the time. So if so, then we could still achieve a order of a constant operation for all operations for this cube. 그죠? 아이디어만 설명해 주고 넘어가면 뭐, 뭐, 뭐겠어? 어레이 이렇게 돼 있는데 어레이 끝하고 뒤로 붙였단 말이야. 링크리스트 때는 이렇게 그렸죠? 그죠? 링크리스트 때는 이렇게 하기는 편하지 뭐. 포인터만 다시 처음으로 가면 되니까. 근데 어레이, I'd like to have this as a if so, I can just move around this pointer, front, rear. I can move this around, this around. I don't need to shift elements itself. That will save me the time complexity. That's the main idea for the solution approach for this. Remedy. They, they, their solution is in modify formula equation that can provide the worst case add and delete the run delete the times in constant times. It's look uh, this is a formula for you moving front to one by right. So now in that exact same equation you do a modular of a max size. 
무슨 모듈러 for mod 이거 뭐야? In, in, I think C++ they put this as a modular. This is mod. 이, 이거 다 알죠? 모듈 모듈러. 알지? They modular modular by a maximum size. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Modular seven. So every time it, I hit front again, it would, the number keep increasing. Seven will give me zero. Fourteen also zero again. Which means I'm keep coming back to the front all the time because of this modular operations. 예를 들어 total size가 5면 index front가 5를 가리키고 있으면 다시 0이잖아. Location 0. 빙빙 도는 거야. 계속 프론트는 계속 움직이는 거야. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 12 13. Max size는 아니까. Max of the modular value of that. Which means every time I hit the zero, I'm in the beginning of a array. Itself. That's why we take that modular value of it. So without we, without physically attaching these two, we can just simply assume this. We can we can do a circular uh, queue like operation on top of this array. 무슨 말인지 이해 가죠? 영 일, 아니야? 아니 이렇게 보면 돼. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 됐죠? 프론트가 여기 있어서 프론트가 처음엔 0이었어 0 저, 저 시계 따르면 매번 뭐 없어지고 할 때마다 오른쪽으로 하나씩 가잖아 프론트가 하나씩 더 하잖아 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 뭐 이렇게 됐다 6 같단 말이야 문제가 되는 게 6보다 커지면 어떡하냐였죠 이럴 때는 뭐 어떻게 뭐 어떻게 하는지 모르겠다고 막 그랬죠 아니면 제일 <웃음> 방법은 있는 것 애들을 그냥 앞으로 다시 한번 다 가져오든가 근데 그렇게 하고 싶지 않아 근데 이렇게 하면 계속 편할 것 같단 말이야 프론트만 하면 그 시계에다가 요거를 계산하는 시계에다가 모듈 6 했어 7이야 아니야 6이면 여기가 6이다 6 다시 6 7 8 9 10 프론트가 계속 늘어나죠 근데 6의 모듬은 얼마야 0. 6에 7에 모으면 얼마예요? 1. 0. 1. 2. 3. 똑같이 가르키죠? 로케이션 뭐 프론트 값은 계속 늘어나는데 모듈을 하면 이 안에서 값으로 계속 변하잖아. 이게 빙빙 돌잖아. 그러니까 굳이 뭐 이걸 굳이 여기다 이렇게 붙이, 갖다 붙인다는 개념이 아니라 수만 변하면 이 안에서 계속 빙빙 돌수 있게 할수 있으니까. 내가 왜 한국말을 설명하고 있냐? Sorry, briefly again. I thought I thought I was explaining this. So that modular operation will keep my front index value will stay in this uh, uh, range of these values, zero to five. In this is case, six elements, zero to one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So zero to six. Is always give me the value of between zero to six, so I keep circling around this Q as the front value keep increasing. That's a uh, modular operation. Is what modular operation is doing. So I don't. I can avoid any shifting element operation in here. Of course, this will have its own problems later. I mean. Since we taking this approach, we don't know which end is front or rear at some point. I don't know where I am. It seems to be I'm hit my end of my list, but I'm back to the front again. So there will be uh, some confusing cases to, uh, to check. So make sure we don't do any stupid operation, adding it again, removing stupid elements out of it, those stuff. So there are special conditions to check, but main idea is having a circular queue. Way. And modular operation will get us there. Are we okay with the ideas? Again, in class, you can just take the main ideas. It's your job to read your textbook and read the slide and do very details. I mean, th but this equation is exactly what I did. It's not so, something that difficult. I don't have any calculus in it. 뭐 미적분이 들어가 있는 식도 아니고. 
plus minus the name. If you do a one round of testing, I mean, you will see what I mean. But that's the main idea of this. In a way, your textbook is quite nice. They tell you everything about how to do the coding yourself. Usually, they give you typical assignment, typical textbook. I mean, other textbooks, they ask you to implement a circular queue. That's it. They don't, exp they don't give you the solutions for that. They just give you the ideas for this. Uh, you can use a modular to make it uh, your index value stay within the reasonable range. That's it. But in your textbook, actually give you the formulas to follow. I mean, it's quite nice. They actually give you all the solutions that you need for your coding. You just simply translate that into the C++ or C, whatever your choice. In a way, that's, I kind of liked it too. Circular queue. 나는 내 전에도 비슷한 얘기 한번 했는데 나는 학교 다닐 때 몰랐어. 서큘러 큐나 뭐 이런 거를 하라고 나오면 책에 아무리 뒤져봐도 답이 안 나와 있는 거야. 어떻게 할 줄을 모르겠더라고. 그때는 구글도 막 처음 생겼을 때라 구글도 막 자료가 많이 없었었어요. 막 학교에서 막 구글 생겼다고 야 숙제가 구글에다 뜬대더라 막 이럴 때였어. 진짜 막 솔루션이 야 구글 잘 찾으면 뜬대더라. 그래서 당시만 해도 구글 모르는 사람이 반이었고. 좀 아는 사람이 한 반이었고 그래갖고 솔루션도 많이 없고 이럴 때인데 그러니까 뭐 어디에서 답을 찾을 수가 없는 거야 도서관 가서 앉아있어 책을 읽어봐야 잘 모르겠고 이렇게 주면 사실 코딩하는 게뭐 실제로 코딩하는 어사이먼트가 많이 안 나가서 걱정하는 사람도 있는 거 알고 있는데 사실 다 거의 답을 주고 한 거라 그냥 번역하는 수준밖에 안돼 코딩을 하면 C로 이거를 그냥 C++로 식도 다 줬는데 뭐 그대로 똑같은 것밖에 안 되니까 크게 걱정 안 해도 돼요. 옛날에는 아이디어만 그렇게 교수님이 와갖고 어, 됐지? 이러고 나갔어. 붙여? 이러고 나갔어. 뭔 소리 하는지도 모르고 모듈러 뭐 이런 건 생각도 못하고 그랬던 것 같아요. 또 영어 강의니 또 내가 뭐 알아들었겠어. 나도 찾지. 못 알아들어. 아, uh, custom array queues, 1D array queue, this is typical way, circular view of array, right there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, again, modular, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you will be keep circle, circle around the, that queue, to be more circle around that array. Possible configurations of the three elements, oh, I can see this, here. so, I don't know, you just pick out any locations for that. A, B, C in that location, maybe they pop up a few before. And, okay. Uh, see why, how we can add an element to this. There are also, they have a rule to where to start from a front pointer to or not. So we're gonna take this way. Use your integer variables front and rear. I mean front and rear. When I say moving front and rear, it's simply adding a value or subtracting a value. It's just simply integer pointer, integer. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So when I call the two integer variables, front is one position counterclockwise from the first element. One position from the counterclockwise, uh, one position counterclockwise from a first element. So if, this is my first element, A, B, C. My front pointer will be counterclockwise to the left here. This will be my front pointer in it. This will be slightly different from the example that we saw. I mean, one D array front is always first element. But now we're gonna put that front as one before. Okay? So in this case, front, the value of front will be one because this is location one. 맞지? According to the definition here. Rear gives the position at the last element. Rear is still the same. A, B, C, rear is at position four. I'm gonna put that as rear here. So this is my starting where I can do stuff. So, 
in severe is the okay it's another example for front if ABC is lying on like this front will be in this case is four rear is one You down slide room now. Okay, 편해요. 이렇게 나중에 <웃음> 하나의 방법이에요. 방법. Checklist 하기. 왜 그렇게 하냐 그러면은 그렇게 안 하고 할수 있는 방법은 좀더 복잡하게 돼서 할 수도 있어요. 그렇게 안 하고도 할수 있지. 근데 지금 이렇게 하는 거는 여기서 방법을 가르쳐 주는 건데 왜 그렇게 하냐면 나중에 이 다다다음 슬라이드 나오는데 나중에 Q가 꽉 차면 if the Q is Full, then front and rear will be probably at the same position. But when the queue is empty, it will be also at the same position. So it, you don't know whether the queue is full or empty. So there are, in order, the, the, order, in order uh, the reason they put this in this way to check such conditions later. So in this way, rear at the counterclockwise one before the, the first value, rear still pointing to the last value. In this way, customer IQ, add an element means move the rear one clockwise this way clock is going this array. So I'm going to add a, another value, D in this array. D, rear is now 5. Okay? It's, not, it's, a, it's the same as the one dimensional array representation that we looked at. So then put the elements in the queue at the rear. It's still a constant operation, right? I'm adding, just simply adding an element to our array. <coughs> Remove an element. Just, just remind you that this is one of the ways of doing it. This not, might not be the only way. If you can come up with your own way of doing the circular queue implementation, be my guest. But I'm just saying this is one of the ways to implement the queue, uh, circular queue ways. Uh, remove an element, move front one clockwise. When you try to move, remove an element clockwise. I like to remove an A, move one, front, move one. At this point, so I can take a look at front is two, get the elements at the position two, pop it. Then it, this will be empty too, right? So front is, again, the first elements counterclockwise one. counterclockwise at the same time, rear is not moving. We're just removing an element. Moving a clockwise means you just add, in, add one, rear plus plus, add one values. If the rear value equal to Q length, Q length is, for example, five, rear value five, rear is zero. Rear should be rear plus one modular Q length. I just plug in the numbers. We'll see if you're the rear value is the same as the value um, of the total size of the Q, you should put that as a zero. And the rear value will be a rear plus modular Q length. I mean, this, those two are same. Again, that idea, keep going around modular. Empty the queue, rear, rear, what's <coughs> 
and my empty in the queue. So I'm just keep moving the front and the counterwise. Front plus one, front plus one, front plus one, front plus one. Now you see that you will see a case that front and rear will be pointing to the same position. They will have the same value in the model locations. Continue, continue. Now I'm here. Both are pointing to the same location. This can happen, right? We are in circular ways. Then what? That was just for the emptying the queue. I'm removing every element in the circular queue. And the last point, I'm, I'm, uh, the front and rear will meet each other in one position. That's the empty the queue. When a series of removals, series of DQs, cause the queue to be become empty, front should be equal to rear. Sure. As we see, uh, saw from a um, diagrams, the, the figures that we saw. When the queue is constructed, it is empty, right? Declare a queue. If you don't add any values in, that should be also empty too. So initialize front, rear should be zero when you try to create a queue, circular queue, of course. So that is the empty conditions. But problem will come later. You will have a difficulty of telling whether queue is empty or full. Because in case of full, you will also running into similar situations. 그럼 이거 뭐 뭐하는데 이제 앞으로 I like to try to create a Q circular Q. The initial value of front and rear will be zero, 그죠? Or without knowing that full cases, if you if you're code checking if the rear and front value is equal, then it means the Q is empty. So those things can be directly coded into C++, right? What about full tank? What about you have every element in the list? Maximum element in the list. OK, that's a starting. I'm adding an element to a rear. So it should be up here, D here. Probably, I'm guessing next one will be here. So. Now you're meeting rear and front and one location. This is also same. This is also same situations, right? Front and rear is equal to each other. But it seems it's the queue empty. Is the queue empty? Your queue empty? Oh, this queue is full, complete opposite situation, but rear and front is still equal. Same condition can result in two different situations. Exact opposite. One is empty, one is full. So question comes, how do you make a difference between Q is empty or full? We only have one signature for that at this moment. The rear and front value is equal. How can you make a difference? How can we make a, make a difference between the two different cases? Between the two cases. Uh, when the addition of an element will be cause the queue to be full, increase the array size. I mean, if you foresee, it cannot foresee, but if you're going to do too many additions, then make sure you have enough array size. So uh, even if you involving other end operations, I mean, let's, let's, to be, uh, let's try to be safe out of it. So increase the array size is one obvious solution to this. Or define a Boolean variables. Last operation is add. So I'm gonna introduce another Boolean variable, whether it's true or false. Just simply asking, what's my last operation? I did my operation add, and then my rear and front is equal. It means most likely my my queue is full. If my last operation is not add, and still the next one I check rear and front is equal, probably it's not the full queue, probably empty queue. So I just define one single one to check every single time. Following each add operation, set this variable to be true. So when I do add, put this variable to be true, true, true. When I'm doing 
other operations, I'm going to uh, change it to a false. Okay, so this one will keep maintaining my addition operation, whether I did it or not. Following each deletion operation, set this variable to be false. Like I say, each a queue is empty if and only if front and rear is equal and last operation add is not true. My last operation is not add and front and rear is equal, then empty. Extra conditions now we have just to make sure that full empty queue situation do not mix up with the full and empty queue situations. Queue is full if and only if front and rear is equal, same condition, and Last operation add is true. Okay. So these two conditions, extra uh, these extra conditions will get us, uh, will allow us to use the circular queue ways of doing it. So everyone is happy by now that every operation can be done in constant times. We just simply moving front and rear in this way they represented. That's why they say it's a custom array queues. They change some formulas, uh, uh, make sure we don't do any shifting in the, uh, while we're working on with this queue. Or define a valuable number of elements if following each addition is operation I mean, another way, another way of doing it. Uh, define a following, uh, define a valuable num elements. Following each operation, increment these valuables. If I do a one add, one, next add, two, three, four. Following each deletion operation, decrement this value uh, by one. So my addition was three. Next time I do my deletion, three minus one, two. Another deletion, three, uh, two minus one, one. So when I'm adding a value, plus one, and I'm removing a value, minus one. And then when you do a, whether your front and rear is equal, you also check this value. Whether this value is zero or not. If the number of elements value is zero, means that empty. I add a five elements, I also did five deletion, five minus five, zero. Otherwise, if some values out there it means that it may not be empty at all. It means always full as well. So that's another way of checking uh, number of elements. <sighs> if you think about it, that is number of elements. It, its last operation is add number of elements. It's almost the same way. It's simply counting how many add you did. The main idea is just same. Which way do you prefer is up to you. I mean. I don't see too much difference between the two. This idea is just that we should have uh, extra checking conditions to check whether something is full or empty because rear and front equal doesn't give us uh, enough details for that part. So what we discussed here is nicely described in this program 9.2, 9.3, and 9.4, but it's just exactly the same as in text. Uh, I mean, the, the stuff on this slide. See figure point uh, figure 9.7 for doubling array queue length. Doubling array queue length. That is also extra operation. You have to declare large value, lar uh, another array with the size double of the current array, and then you have to copy the elements into the new array that will have a time complexity and space complexity as well. Okay. Time now. Ah, this slide. This is the next page. I'm not So we are done. I'm sorry. So we are done talking about a array-based representation for the queue. Uh, we'll start from one D array now till. Uh, now we discussed for the um, circular array stuff and extra checking conditions we should have in order to achieve this way. And the bottom line of using all this is um, like to have every operation in constant times. 
and which was a possible in this way. Okay, uh, it's, let's just do a few more slides. Uh, linked list representation of the queue. Linked list. Would you linked list? It's more simpler. I mean, this to this. Simple translation, it'll be easier. Uh, can represent the queue using a chain. Queue using a chain. We did look at the um, uh, <coughs> using chain for the stacks, right? And then the, when we use a stack, uh, when we use a chain in the stack, the one of the issue was which end should be the bottom or top. Based on the choice, we can achieve a better time complexity, right? I mean, whether we put that as a top on the left or right. I mean, one is order n, the other one is constant for the stack. I mean, similar stuff will be in the queue as well. Uh, need the two variables front and rear to keep track of the two end of the queue. Two options, assign head as a front, tail as a rear. Assign head as a front, tail as a rear. Assign head as a rear, tail as a front. Well. Front, rear, or rear, front. Which way? We are adding an element to a rear for the Q examples. So in terms of adding an element, perhaps it might be nice to have a keep rear at the this side. Oh. Oh, rear. Rear에 맨 끝에 가서 붙이려면 아, 더블로 그렇죠. 싱글로 아니, 지금 싱글로 그래 하잖아. 싱글 링크 리스트. I'm not talking about double link list. Single link list. 헷갈리게 씨. Anyway, I, I just just reminding for the stack examples for for linear list. I mean, it might be better to have a rear at the here and adding an elements. And 그렇지 뭐 똑같이 front 나 rear. Rear and if you want to take the, out the elements, which should be done in front, so that's also take order n. <laughs> if you take this case, rear, adding an element to rear, also order n. But taking out the element front is order 1. So like you say, either way is I mean, same. We have to sacrifice 1 to achieve both. I mean, but, but for the stack case, it was a different, right? So, which option is better and why? I, I see it as almost same. I mean, we at least have order and operation for one of these operations anyways. So please take a look at for the figures 9.9 .9 and 9.10. Um, you see why that is. How can we implement a linked list representation of the queue? C program 9.5 for implementing a push and pop method for the link queued. I mean, it's almost same for the like stacks. Almost same for the stacks. How can you add them? Add an element to link list. Change a pointer. How to remove an element? Go to the if I wanted to add, remove an element in this link list. Go to the last one. Delete this. Update the pointer and this one to a what? This should be what at this point? Well, no, so no. Another way of saying that I don't have any other pointer next to me. So, in that case, we're going to put that as a null value for that pointer. So, how can we implement the link list representation of the queue? I mean, same, whether I should put my front in here or back, you will add elements in two different locations based on your, your definitions. So, simply explaining that, 
Uh, if I decide to keep as a front, as a front there, first node, and the last node as a rear, and that way, you see that this one, last one, they don't have any other element, so they put the pointer as a null, empty ones, empty ones. When front is left of the list, and the rear is the right end, right end, so you can just simply use the same operation in chain, extended chain class that we have looked at before. And for the array representation, we, look, we use the array link linear list class that we used before. This one, we rely on link list, so we're gonna use a extended chain class. Empty chain, extended empty class, same. Check whether, how many pointers do I have to follow. If it's zero, then zero elements in the list. Uh, size, likewise, front is get in the zero, last, get last. Uh, you might need to implement the go to the last elements in the link list. You keep following. Are you going to turn there? If the front is left hand, you just simply do a first one out, take out. Next one, take out. So you don't need to go to the end of the list for this one. Uh, push the elements, push back the elements, push a new elements in here. So in order to do that, you need to go through the one, two, three, four, five. Just like in stack examples for keeping the top at the rightmost end. Pop, erase the first one. Blah, blah, blah. It's pretty much the same. Okay, so there is not much to discuss for the linked list re representation. I mean, it's almost the same as in stack case ones. Um, so let's try to think back the stack ones. There are a couple of problems that we use a stack to solve. What was the first example in, we used in stack? Parenthesis matching. Can you use a queue to solve the same problem? Uh, if you do, please let me know. I, don't, I cannot think of any other ways of doing it. I, likewise, they also say, the parenthesis matching, probably you need a, Q, a stack to solve it. Towers of Hanoi problems. Can you use your queue to solve the same problem? You can use a queue to solve a Towers of Hanoi? No. If you do, also please let me know. Uh, switch box routing, we didn't discuss it yet. Uh, probably not much. Uh, methods of invocation and returning. Uh, it's it's more, it has to be in stack. Uh, when we discussing the space-time complexity, there are some parts we left. Like when you try to call another function from other program, then those extra memory space required usually uh, stored by a stack like <laughs> operations. So those stuff we didn't discuss that much. But these one also cannot be replaced by Q. Only able to only be able to do it with a, what is it? a stack. Applications and which stack may be replaced with the queue. Railroad car rearrangement. Everyone read the problem on your textbook? Last slide was asking you to read the example of for the railroad car rearrangement problem, which I explained briefly on the board as well. Now we all know what it is. I haven't given you assignment three yet, so I, I don't think anyone read yet. Uh, you will have to do it anyways. But it's basically you have set up uh, trains that you want it to be in order, and it was coming in random orders to maximize the delivery efficiency. And the example we saw from a stack text, I oh know, yeah. In the previous chapter, it was you have a three empty tracks to use it, so you can rearrange your cars in the order that you want it to do. Um, in that problem, you can also use a queue. The one we discussed last class was in was it queue stack? Anyway, both cases if possible, you can use stack or queue to solve it. Red in maze will come up in next few slides. This 
submitted to a problem in section 8.53. I think I asked to read that section last time. And they have a random numbers are given and I will explain this next class. I mean, but I did explain briefly. I will, I will try to show you how to use a stack to do it, to uh, rearrange the stuff. But, but do please read it, okay? Any questions 